It's the professional MasterChef semi-finals. This week, the contestants are being sent to cook for some of the most inspirational chefs in the country. Happy food, happy chefs, happy customers. Good start, good solid start. I'm impressed. So this is where it really hits. Okay. Need to really knuckle down, yeah? Last time, sous chef Mark was the first to earn a place in finals week. Now, the next three chefs will battle to stay in the competition. Another interesting and intriguing dish. It means so much to be cooking for a place in finals week. I've got butterflies in my stomach. It's just amazing. Because honestly, everybody can have a bad day in the kitchen, and that's it. You're out. I just want to go in there, keep my smile, keep doing well and doing myself justice. There's not one person here that wants it more, to be in that final. We want to see them be inspired by the chefs that they're going to spend the time with. I hope they bring some of that back into the MasterChef kitchen. It's early morning, and the contestants are in Edinburgh. They're about to spend the next two days under the guidance of one of the finest chefs in Britain, Tom Kitchen. Opened 10 years ago, the kitchen received its first Michelin star within six months and has gone on to win global acclaim. The philosophy we have at the restaurant is called From Nature to Plate. One of the most important things in my food is knowing exactly where my produce comes from. When you work with seasonality properly, then your menu changes automatically. As soon as something comes into season, then bang, that's going straight on the menu. We take the nature that inspires us, this wonderful Scottish nature, and bring it into the restaurant. It's a complete passion. I mean, I'm absolutely fanatical about the restaurant, the food. Every day off is about what we're going to have for lunch. Morning. Morning, Hi. Chef Tom. Morning. Nice to meet you. Morning, Chef. Good morning. Morning, Chef. Morning. How are we doing? All right? Great. Thank, Thank you. Well. Thank We've you. got 80 covers for lunch. And my food today is going to be prepared by you guys as well. So it has to be of the best, best quality. I want you to enjoy what we're going to do today. OK, I'm going to take you around, show you what's happening, and we'll get started, OK? Follow me. All eyes will be on us. These guys in there will do it every day. They know Tom's food, they know his style, they know what he likes. The pressure's going to be immense. While Nick is used to a busy service, it'll be a challenge for both Darren, who is a development chef, and Danilo, who cooks at the Italian Embassy. I'm a little bit nervous. Being, again, a line cook is going to be hard. It's going to be a real push for me, getting up to speed. I'm not here to, to sit back. I am here to push, and I'm going to push as hard as I can. OK, Nick, main course. And I've deliberately done something really special here, so we sell loads and loads. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a lamb dish, OK? So lamb is at its best at this time of year. So we've got the rack of lamb into the pan, sizzle. It's exactly what we're looking for. We seal it all over. A little bit of garlic and thyme. And we'll just finish that in the oven, get that in the oven like that. Now for the shoulder of lamb, so. And we're going to baste that through so it's lovely and golden, really glassy. That's what I'm looking for. We've got the neck of lamb. We've wrapped it in foie de brick, and then we've wrapped it in potato spaghetti as well into the fryer, OK? Meanwhile, we're going to get our garnish on. We've got the potato terrine, cooked in clarified butter, heritage carrots, different colours, different varieties, and we've got the tongue of the lamb as well. So plates up, and we'll start to dress. We'll put the potato terrine in the middle. Beautiful braised shoulder, same proudly, you know, really lovely glassy, and I'm the king of this plate. <laughs> Carrots, tongue. Lovely pink lamb. Then we've got our crispy neck. 
like so. Got lovely carrot puree as well. And then raw carrot as well. Lamb sauce, and we'll serve that on this side. And that, for me, is a real selection of Scottish summer lamb and beautiful heritage carrots. All right. Amazing, yeah. <laughs> Confident we can do this one? Yes, chef, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. I mean, that yes, chef, I'm looking for yes, chef. We, oui, chef. Yeah, <laughs> come on. It's absolutely blown me away, yeah. The flavours are so clear, it's so rich and light at the same time. It's immense. I think I'll be a tad busy today. I think anyone that sees a rack of lamb and about four different varieties of lamb, I think they're going to choose it. So I'll be running around a bit, I reckon, but that's what I'm here for. Okay, Darren, so your dish today, we're going to do a fish dish, a turbot dish, which I'm really excited about. So imagine as a chef, you know, I love to think like this, the turbots from the sea, you know, the king of the sea. You've got the seaweed being foraged from the shores of Scotland. You've got all the wonderful shellfish. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our mussel stock in the pan there. As that reduces, we're going to add butter to make an emulsion. We drop our different shellfish in. Just gently warm it like that. The secret to a lot of my cooking, that saltiness there, a dash of lemon juice, and that lemon juice is just going to change the complexity of that completely. Oh, you see that? Yeah, it's amazing. Lemon juice, vinegar, it just opens up food so much. Just looking at that pan, it, it looks like a rock pool already. Yeah. The quenelle we put to warm gently in the water there, and then in another little pan, in with the lovely seaweed. I don't want to see that brown, dark. It's got to be green and vibrant like that. OK, so next up, Darren, we're going to cook the turbot. In the cooking of the fish, Darren, obviously, I'm looking for cooking to perfection. I don't cook in a bag here. We're old school. We cook in a pan, we cook on the stove. That's what I want, that's what I love. OK, so that fish there, for me now, is perfect. And we're up to the pass, OK? OK, so first of all, we've got this wonderful seaweed. We're going to put that as the base of the plate. We're trying to create, like, essence of the sea. Then we've got the different seaweeds. OK. Every single one's got to be the same. I'll give up my best shot. Good lad. Thank you. Amazing, just brilliant. The dish is amazing, the, the flavours, the depths, the textures. I, I just can't wait to cook it. OK, Danilo, we're going to do a cracking dessert today, something really which is the essence of the season that we're in, OK? Fittingly, it's a kind of take on a panna cotta as well, so it should be right up your alley, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This dish is a layered strawberry panna cotta. It's really celebrating the strawberries. So you get that really striking, you know, it's really, it's really, lovely. really beautiful, yeah? So with the strawberries, place these around like so. And then we've got the beautiful meringue. So we've got some orange confit, which is okay. the skin which has been blanched and cooked in sugar syrup. And some beautiful strawberry crisps as well. Importantly, we're going to keep one just on top. So pastry is all about finesse. It's all about attention to detail, Daniel. There is no room for error with this. And then we've got the lovely sorbet. There's no additives in this. There's nothing else except for strawberry. And the panella will sit just on top like that. And then we've got some strawberry consomme. It's really beautiful. Danilo will not make the panna cotta from scratch. He'll only plate it. So Tom has another challenge for him. One thing. You've got two dishes. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. So the other dish, souffle. This is Chris, my pastry chef. Hello, Chris. Hi. Chris, nice head pastry chef. He's the master of souffle. OK, so we've got the egg whites, Chris. We'll whisk the egg whites, OK? Watch how they come up. Look how it holds on to the whisk there, you know? Yeah. Those egg whites aren't going anywhere. They're ready, they're firm. Yeah. This is a really important stage of the souffle. Just add a little bit of egg whites and incorporate them with the creme pâtissière. So, so crucial. If you overwork that, heat it and beat it and beat it, the air's going to be out the souffle and it's not going to rise. And now we put a little secret compartment of gooseberry compote. Gooseberry compote. Push that mixture in and make sure we're getting all the holes.
I'll crumble. On its own. And that is going to give that wonderful crunch. Let's get them in the oven. Bang. It's in the oven. Eight minutes on the timer. You've got a table of two, a table of four. You might have multiple going away. So you have to time that with the panna cotta so everything comes together on the pass. Yes, sir. We got it? Yes, sir. Oh, look at that. OK, it's beautiful. You see the texture. There we have it. Gooseberry crumble souffle, elderflower ice cream. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Fantastico. Fantastico, sir. <laughs> I'm happy. In a way, terrified as well. Doing souffle is one of my nightmares. So it's really tricky, but I love them. The first customers are due in less than half an hour. Let's not make any bones about this. This is incredibly tough for these contestants, for me, for any chef in the world, just to be dropped into someone else's kitchen, let alone a Michelin star kitchen. Oh, big, big, big step. I'm excited. I just want to embrace it, just get in there, get into service. I don't want to let him down at all. I don't want to let the guys down, and I want the customers to pay. It's a massive step up in standard for me. Let's just hope that my memory is good enough and, and it, I don't forget how to cook during the service. Being here doing pastry, you really take me out of my comfort zone. Uh, it's going to be crazy. You can really feel the heat coming up now. Quarter past 12, first customers are sitting down. Friday lunch, full to the brim, massive. OK, listen up. So when I call the checks on, there's a system that we have here, OK? Remember, we live and die by the clock, OK? If you're going to be late, hands up, I'm going to be late. Communicate, OK? Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Samash, one lamb, one turbot. Yes, yes, chef. Yes, chef. Samash, two covers, one sea trout, one ham. Main course, two lamb. We oui, chef. Six covers on the board, Nick. Wait, five lamb. We share. First check's out, uh, yeah, first check, all lamb. It's all go straight away. It's good, I've got no, no waiting around straight in. It's, it's pretty relentless, Just trying to keep the pace up. People like lamb in Scotland, apparently. <laughs> as well as ensuring each rack is cooked to order, Nick must perfectly glaze the lamb's shoulder. How we doing? OK? That's not glassy enough, Nick, eh? Get that in there, a bit of colour. Look at that. Huh? A bit of chicken stock? Yeah, now baste that. Baste that and get a bit of colour in there. Oh, now we're talking, Chef. Look at the difference. Look at the difference, yeah? Wait. Hello. If it's not good, it's coming back. You understand? We Chef. Nick, don't let me down on the first check. We still don't have the lamb. Wait. Max. Nice, that's very good. Well done. We oui, chef. OK, service, please. OK, good start there, Nick. Good, solid start. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Yes, chef. Great start from there. there. I mean, you're just looking for a little bit more finesse, a little bit... Just understand how the kitchen works. I couldn't ask for a better start than that. He's really giving it his best shot. Good. Uh, yeah, another one away now. Just carrying on. Backs walking with lamb. Meanwhile, Darren is still waiting for his first service in three years to begin. I'm laying out my ingredients just to try and get ahead of the game, so when Chef shouts, I'm ready to just turn and throw things in pans. Being organised just means that when you have to go, you're not in a mess. It's going on four turbot, Darren, yes? Yes, Chef. OK. Darren. Yes, Chef. That fish should be on by now, huh? Go on, Chef, yeah. Darren, first dish of the day, OK? Make it a good one. Yes, chef. Seaweed, emulsion, turbot. Yes. OK, we should be coming up now. Where's the seaweed, please? Seaweed, chef. Where do you want it? You're dressing, big man. Yeah, eh? I... Come on, then. You've got another 
Like, come on, let's go. Dress, chef. Yes, chef. Okay, seaweed, four plates here. Off you go. You gotta be faster. You gotta be faster. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Okay, Thank you, chef. That back over there. Right. I just love it. Serve it. Bring the needle with you. I want to check that fish. Yeah. Thank you. Keep dressing. We're going to be late. We're going to be late. The big one's not good. Okay, chef. Get it back on. You got to go faster here, Darren. Huh? Yes, chef. Huh? I want you back here dressing. Yes, chef. We're late. We are officially late, Darren. Yeah. First yes, check, and we're late. Come on. Put it down. Put it down. This what I do. Got the sauce. I'm filling in the gaps. Yeah. Yes, chef. Think about what you're doing. You're not yep. making a mess. You're messy. You're messy, messy, messy. Yep. Service, please. I just haven't hit the ground running, so it's going to be better for here on end. As Darren tries to get to grips with the pace, Danilo is also under pressure, juggling the plating of the panna cotta while keeping an eye on his souffles. Danilo, first dessert's coming up. Make sure they're good, yeah? Yes, chef. The final touch is a perfect strawberry sorbet quenelle. This is too big. Concentrate, concentrate, OK? No, no. Danilo, that's not good enough. Chris, can you do the Cornell, please? Hand your back. Coming out. Danilo, the souffles, I want them straight. Right? Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Could have gone better. The souffle, it wasn't, it wasn't straight up. And I wasn't able to make a nice canel. Uh, next time, I want to do much better than this. With the restaurant almost full, there's no respite in the kitchen. Right, guys, let's keep going. Keep busy there. Stay focused. Darren, we need a wee bit more there from you, yeah? Yes, Chef. Fish is the name of your game, huh? Yeah. I'm sending three turbot at the moment, uh, but I've got, like, 11 on order now, so it's really hectic. How long on the two turbot, please? I'm walking now, Chef. Come on, Chef. Hello. What are you doing? It just broke with a cloth there. What well, didn't break? You broke it. Yeah, well. Yeah, well, what? Yeah, I broke Be it. Be careful yeah. in what you're doing. Yes, chef. One lamb, one turbot straight away after it. Zero eight. Yes, chef. It's not looking good. It's zero seven already. We haven't even got anything up yet. Darren and Nick's next dishes are part of the same order. If you're going to be late, what did I say to you, Chef? Yes, Chef. Seaweed's just coming right no, now. No, no, no. What did I say to you, Chef? To tell you, Chef. Yeah, so communicate with your... Nick, Nick, I'm going to be a minute late. So what yeah. time for the... What time are we going on, Darren? 09. 09. OK, you heard it. 09 now for that table. Zero 09. Wait. We got everything, Nick? Wait. Uh, it's completely nuts, but... It's just never, never... Uh, there's no let-up. Hello, you're carving that too early there, huh? Sorry, Chef. So, why are you not checking what he's doing there? No, eh? Chef. OK? So, we're not going to use that there, right? No, Chef. Nick, Darren, you both got to communicate more here. I understand things go wrong. I understand it's difficult. We're all under pressure. If you're going to be late, communicate, OK? Chef. So, it needs to be better. It needs to be better. Service, please. Yeah, we, me and Darren have got to maybe talk a bit more over... Um, you just don't want, you just concentrate on your own thing, but he's going on a dish as well, and it's got to be out at the same time. So, yeah, we've got to work on that. Here, yeah, Daniel, that's a check on there. Two covers, it's too sweet from the lunch. Straight away, yeah. yes, sir. Come on, let's go. 
The customer's waiting for this. It's been 90 seconds already. It's going to be eight minutes in the oven. You have to be faster than it Yes. Souffles are coming, Danilo. Okay, let's make it good there. Manage two covers, two panna cotta. Same one, same one. Yes, sir. OK, Danilo, it's all about the Cornells here, yeah? With just seconds remaining, the pressure is on Danilo to perfect his quenelles before the souffles overcook. OK, the timer's going off. Time for the souffle. Come on, Danilo, we need to go fast. The souffle, Danilo. Yes, sir. But get the souffle, it's going to overcook. Danilo, the souffle. Chris, do the quenelles. The souffle stays in the oven, it keeps rising and rising and rising, and then it falls over. You are going to nail this. Look at me in the eyes. Tell me. I'm going to nail this. You're going to nail it. Thank you, sir. Ah, uh, guys. Nah. And I, I'm overthinking it. Better. Keep practicing. It's yes, getting sir. better. You'll manage this, okay? Yes, sir. Right, where are my three guys there? Yep. Yeah? We're going into the last part of the service now, okay? Let's really give it one last push, okay? Come on. Whee. Yes, chef. Let's make this count. Three turbot coming up, yeah? Yes, chef. This is your moment, Darren. This is your very last turbot, yes? Yes, Chef. It has to be the best. Yes, Chef, it will be. Darren and Nick's last orders will also be going out to the same table. One minute late on the, on the, the next table. OK, Chef. Last check. Uh, yeah, carving up, ready to go. I want to make it as good as my, uh, as my first, like the saying goes in the kitchen. Come on, Nick. We're waiting on you, Nick. Wait. Garnish up. Garnish up. Chef, facts. Come on, Darren. Where's my turbot, Chef? It's coming right now, Chef. Come on, Chef. It's perfect. That's perfect. That's perfect. OK, that's good. I like this. We're coming together as a team a bit now. Make sure that lamb's still hot, Nick, yeah? Push, 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 push. That's it. On. Looking good, looking good. Service, please, away. All right? Chef, Enjoy that. Brilliant, Chef. Thank you very much. Enjoy it's that. amazing. Shaky start, yeah. but you nailed it in the end. It was really good cooking. You should be really proud of yourself. Thank you very much, Chef. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope Tom is impressed in the end. I, I mean, I think, you know, he said to me that I should be really proud, so I, I assume he was impressed, but I know he wasn't very impressed to start. Look at that. Eh? Save the best to last. Woohoo! Hi, service group. Hold on, chef. Huh? Enjoy that. No, I loved it. Huh? I loved every minute of it. Huh? You did some superb cooking, thank you, chef. Huh? Really, really, really impressed. Congratulations. It's been an amazing day. It's unbelievable what you learn from watching the chef like Tom and his whole brigade are uh, so, so good. Yeah, it's inspiring. It just makes you want to come back and do another service because it's addictive, you know? As lunch draws to a close, Danilo has one more chance to deliver. We've got one panna cotta coming up, Danilo. We're looking for that perfect quenelle. Yes, chef. Yeah, you're expecting the perfect quenelle, he said. I'm, I'm not relaxed at all. Mm. 
Looking good, looking good. Well done, Danilo. Well yes, done. Yes, sir. Thank you. Nice. Good play. Go. Go, 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 go. Yeah. Good. Well done, Danilo. Well yes, done. Yes, sir. Thank you. Here, here, here. Service, please. Oh. Le maestro. Eh? Right. Allez, go. Yeah, I'm feeling good right now. Finally, I get, I get one panacotta ride from, from start to end. Much better than before. Wow, that was a real service of emotions. We had to dig deep, but we got there. I'm proud of them. I'm really proud of them. It's day two in Edinburgh. And the three chefs now have one more chance to impress Tom. So the dish I want the guys to cook is a dish called this crispy sweetbread served with a potato risotto, ox tongue, and seasonal gerolds. This is a new dish and really represents the style and where my cooking is today. First stage with the dish, is to sweat the onion gently without burning. And then we're going to add the blanched potatoes, very al dente potatoes, and then give a nice sprinkling of the rice powder. And this is what's really going to give that risotto effect. Sweat that gently and add the white wine and reduce. And then little by little, adding the chicken stock to cook the potato. Beware, we cannot overcook that potato. The potato should be al dente, like a good risotto. The secret to good sweetbreads is the lovely crispy coating on the outside. Once it's all nice and crispy and cooked, then we put in the ox tongue and the butter and we baste it through. It's a dish that involves precision of cooking and then most importantly, the seasoning. The salt, the parmesan is salty as well. And then they've got to get the jus in there as well to give a really rich potato risotto. It's going to be tricky. So I've seen these guys in service. Now let's see what they're really made of as individuals. I've never made a potato risotto before, so this is going to be interesting. I've played a recipe a couple of times. I think I know what I'm doing, so I really want this to be a success so that I can leave here with my head held high. A bit daunting, but really we're trying to get this sweet bread nice and crispy because I think that's the key. Risotto bound together, not runny. Make sure it's fully seasoned and dry. That's massive, so yeah, I'm happy. I haven't done potato risotto before. There's something that sounds strange to me, but I'll give him a best shot. Should be okay with risotto. Thank you. Wow. You all right? Yeah, good, Chef. That looks like a serious plate of food. It looks fantastic, Darren. That sweetbread is caramelised to perfection. I hope it tastes as good as it looks. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> The sweet bread is perfect, absolutely perfect. The crispy tongue is beautifully caramelised. 
The risotto's missing just a wee bit of juice. You get those potatoes, a bit more stock, butter, parmesan, just create a little bit more emulsion. Yep. But that is one awesome piece of cooking. Thank you very much, Chef. Well done, Chef. Thank you, Chef. Take care. Thank you. It was fantastic. Um, I just, I, I was confident that the dish was okay. You know, I tasted it. I was happy with it. I knew the sweet potato was cooked well, but I just didn't expect that kind of feedback for Tom Kitchen. Smells fantastic. Mm, I can smell the caramelization of the sweetbreads, the mushroom powder. It's beautifully presented. I mean, it's just perfection around the outside there. Thank you. The sweetbreads are caramelized to perfection. The seasoning on the sweetbread is perfect. And the potato. They're just cooked to that perfect al dentiness, you know, because it's so easy to overcook them, isn't it? But oh, yeah. you've really done that well. Thank you. Yesterday you were top notch, and that is a top notch plate of food. Thank you, Chef. Well done, boy. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. <laughs> So surreal, just sitting there in front of Tom. But the feedback was brilliant, and it's just it's so exciting that he, he's enjoying my cooking. Really happy, I really enjoyed it, and uh, it's been a hell of an experience. Wow. That looks like an Italian risotto, <laughs> yeah. eh? It's, like, soft and creamy, but with potatoes. Yeah, eh? it was a bit strange, but <laughs> I enjoyed it. That looks fantastic. Thank you very much, Chef. Oh, I'm going to tuck in, then. Bon appetito. Bon appetito, Chef. The texture of the risotto it's very good. Thank you, Chef. The sweetbreads are caramelised. I think they might be a little bit salty. Shall we? Can you taste? Mm. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. A little bit salty, A bit, a bit too much. Which is a shame, because it's cooked to perfection, the caramelisation. Just a few minor little things yeah. there. I hope you've enjoyed it. I mean, yeah, it just so much, do me yeah. one thing. Just believe in yourself, Chef. Do you know what I mean? You're a good cook. You wouldn't be here if you weren't a good cook. Yes, yeah, Chef. Sure. Thank you. Great work, Daniela. Thank you very good much luck. for having me, John. Thank you. I'm not disappointed. I mean, I was out of my comfort zone. Even though my dish wasn't fantastic, I'm happy to receive feedback from Tom Kitchen. Not everybody gets to do that, so I'm happy. Yeah. Overall, there's been an unbelievable experience this for me. We had three cracking chefs there today. I think they've all, each and every one of them has got something great about them. They're cooking, they're giving it their best shot, and they're really good cooks. I had some really good feedback, so I'm dead chuffed. A bit tired, but dead chuffed. Quite proud of how things went. I could have had a better start, but I feel in the end, overall, I've done quite a good job here today. I knew it was going to be hard, but I really enjoy it. Yeah, I'm going to go for it, and I'll have to start to have more confidence in myself.
chefs, welcome back. Great to see you back in our kitchen. There are two plates of food between you and finals week. One of you, at the end of the day, is leaving the competition. One main course, one dessert. One hour, 45 minutes. Off you go. Coming back from the kitchen has really energised me and just made me want it even more, I think. And yeah, if I can do cook well in an alien kitchen, then coming back here should be a should be a doddle. <laughs> Nick, how are you? Good, thank you. Yeah, very good. Uh, really happy to be back in here. An amazing time in Edinburgh. It was absolutely mind blowing. Just learning so much in such a short space of time. It's just phenomenal. His philosophy on food is just amazing. Really, really uh, sings to me. Nick, so what are you going to be cooking for us today? Uh, today I'm doing pan fried John Dory with lettuce, peas, bacon. And for dessert, I'm doing a nougat glace, uh, parfait. It's with poached peach, honeycomb, honey jelly, and raspberries. I really like these dishes, and I, I hope I'll do them justice for you. But again, it's from coming from Tom's. It's parents' flavours you know go together, just with, with perfect execution. That's, that's the key. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Chef. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Next menu, starting with the John Dory pan roasted and then served as a garnish very similar to Petit Foie à la Française, which is peas, bacon, and braised lettuce. But I love the sound of the pickled cockles, which is new to this plate. The key here is always going to be in the detail and the precision of Nick's work. Nick's dessert is a nougatine, and he's serving it with honeycomb, raspberries, Poached peaches, there's quite a lot of sweetness going on this plate, and I'm very interested to see how it's all going to work together. Chefs, you've had 35 minutes. 35 minutes gone. I'm confident in my dishes that I'm cooking today. Obviously, I've cooked them before and I've tasted them, and I'm really happy. And if I execute everything perfectly, then I, I'm in with a chance, but I just can't make any mistakes. I think it will come down to small mistakes today. Darren. Yes, Chef. How are you doing? Yeah, good, Chef. I'm, I'm under pressure, but I'm getting there. You're always under pressure. I am, yeah. Uh, how was the pressure in Tom's kitchen? <laughs> I have to say, my uh, four years out of the kitchen showed at the start of the service. Um, I mean, I got there in the end, yeah. but it, it was a real struggle. I didn't hit the ground running as I would have liked. Do you miss it? Yeah, it's, it kind of relit a fire I didn't know had been extinguished, you know. I was just in my element. I absolutely loved it. It was such a buzz. Well, I don't have to explain to you guys what it's like. What are you going to be cooking for us today? So today I'm cooking halibut with some comfy chicken wings and some lovely hand-picked Scottish gerols. I picked them myself. Wow. <laughs> Brought them down in the aeroplane. And what about pudding? So I'm doing, this is not easy to say, I'm doing a peanut praline parfait. <laughs> I know, exactly. And I'm serving that with caramelised bananas and uh, chocolate mousse. You know, those flavours are made for each other, you yep. know. Um, it's just something I really like. Really happy with them both, yeah, so I hope you are as well. Thank you. Thank you. Chicken with fish works very well, a bit like a surf and turf. You want the chicken wings to still hold its form on the plate, but literally just falling apart when you eat it. I love the idea of braised leeks, onion rings as well, beautifully pan-fried halibut. It's the one fish that could sit very well with chicken wings. This sounds like a delicious dish. Peanuts, praline, bananas, chocolate. Yes, marriage definitely made in heaven. I love the sounds of the banana curd. I've never had a banana curd before, so it's, I think it's quite a neat take on it. Two dishes sound delicious. These are two dishes that I would choose off the menu. Danilo, Darren and Nick. Guys, you have one hour left to go. I'm trying not to think about that I'm competing for a place in the final week. Because if you overthink it, then I get, again, more nervous and nervous and nervous. So just forget about it. Just go in the kitchen and do a great plate of food. Danilo, tell me, how did you find working with Tom? It was hard, I can't lie. Being back in a Michelin star restaurant kitchen, 
after a few years, it was really hard. Tom told me to be more confident, and that is something that is not, uh, that not the only familiar. one. It's not the only one who's keep on telling me that. And then I realize all the details that is going through a plate of food that comes out to a Michelin star restaurant kitchen. I want to bring that attention to details of my place as well. I suppose the big question is we want to ask you is, what are you going to be cooking for us today? Loin or lamb served with a broad beans pesto and braised green chicory. I'm going to serve the lamb with a licorice sauce mm. and some little bread balls, which is something really traditional in my own region in Italy. Daniela, and what's your dessert for us? I'm doing a tiramisu. Ah, mm. a tiramisu by an Italian. I wouldn't say it's a regular tiramisu. Oh, it's really? my yeah, take but... on, a, on a tiramisu, and I call it chocolate tiramisu. We've seen you mm. put a twist in, in your Italian cooking throughout the competition. And I think we're going to see a bit of that here today. This is exciting. Yeah. I've been watching Danilo today and you can definitely see he's a focused chef. Lamb today flavored or scented with licorice. I'm intrigued. I like the sound of it. I love licorice, I love lamb, but I'm really interested to see how this is going to work. The dessert is a tiramisu, but this is Danilo's modern take on it. Danilo is breaking it down into different elements. That's a very risky thing to do. A tiramisu is a classic dessert. It almost shouldn't be changed. Jeff, you've got 25 minutes left. 25. The atmosphere in our kitchen today, we have some serious chefs in the room. Heads are down and they are focused. There's a professionalism in this kitchen that I love and admire. And when you see three chefs cooking like this, you know you're going to be in for good food. Nick, Darren, Danilo, two minutes. That yes, is it. Chef. Two minutes. Chef. Darren, you're going to have to move a bit quicker. Yes, Chef. I've overcooked my chicken wings. It's pretty chewy, so um, I, I don't think I'm going to serve them, which means my dishes are going to be complete, which is a bit disappointing. I hope the rest of the dish is going to be enough to get me through, but at this point in time, I kind of feel like, you know, I've probably ruined my chances. That is it. Time is up. First up is Nick. His main is pan-fried John Dory with pickled cockles, petit pois à la française, a pea puree, samphire, and a vermouth sauce. Nick, beautiful presentation uh, of the plate. I really like the colours. I always find it quite hard to dress on a rectangle plate, but you've done a really good job of that. The cooking of the John Dory is great. The lettuce and the petit pois à la française and the vermouth sauce is a great flavour and works so well with fish and I really think you've made it fantastically well. And then the little pickling of the cockles are fabulous. I like the dish a lot and it's very good. Thanks, Jeff. The John Dory is cooked wonderfully, seasoned so well. The bacon with the braised gem lettuce is so harmonious. You marry that with the pu puree, it's delicious. I do love the dish, I would eat it all. For dessert, Nick's made a nougat glass parfait with honey jelly cubes, honeycomb, raspberry gel, and poached peaches. Can I say that looks stunning? That really does look stunning. It's a beautifully plated dessert. I love the colours, the way it's been put together. Really, really stunning. Mm. Thank you. I love the parfait and the, the nuts coming through that with the honeycomb, the texture of the peach. It brings a bit of sharpness, which it needs because it's very sweet. The honey jelly, I was worried it would be 
something else that was too sweet on the plate, but it's very delicate. You can taste the honey. A really, really enjoyable dessert, Nick. Well done, you. Thank you. The peaches are beautiful balanced. The raspberries on the plate bring the freshness to it. And the one thing that I was concerned about, or we both were, was the sweetness with it being so honey-based. No, this is absolutely on the bottom. It's great. You, you, your sugar content is absolutely just there. Perfect. Well done. Great dessert again. Thank you, Chef. I'm in a good place, I feel, at the moment. And whether that will translate with the results, who knows. But um, I'm happy. If I go home now, I've given it my all. It doesn't mean I want to go, but, yeah. I've not, I've not left anything behind. That's, that's what I've done again, so I'm quite happy. Darren's up next. He's made pan-fried halibut with white bean puree, crispy shallots, Scottish rolls artichokes and leeks, served with a fish and chicken sauce. I've got a little bit of a confession to make. Um, I bumped the oven when my comfy chicken wings were in and they were overcooked, so I just haven't put them on a dish. I couldn't serve them to you in the way they were. Yeah. The halibut it's cooked wonderfully. I think it's nicely seasoned, still very moist on the inside. The artichokes nicely roasted off and the gerolles are delicious. The sauce has got a bit of sharpness through it. Um, I think it's a real shame that the other element, which is the chicken wings, uh, are missing because it would have been nice to connect it with having some chicken on the plate. Yeah, absolutely. The lemon juice in the sauce works very well. It's almost, almost tastes nutty brown with the fish stock and the, and the chicken stock, it, it works very, very well with this dish. Now, would the chicken wings have added anything extra to this dish? The answer to that is yes, it would. Because the sauce is a chicken base and a fish base, this dish is crying out for those wings, unfortunately. Darren's dessert is a peanut praline parfait with a chocolate mousse, caramelized bananas, banana curd, a nougatine tweel and a toffee sauce. The nougatine is delicious. It works very well with the dish. Uh, and the chocolate mousse is so light and aerated. It's really good. But the one thing that concerns me is the texture of the parfait. It's a little bit on the soft side. Uh, and you've got the soft mousse as well. I'd just love that to have been a little bit colder and a touch firmer. But having said that, the flavours do work. The idea works. Uh, I like the dish a lot. Thank you. The parfait, yes, it hasn't really got the consistency of a set parfait, but you definitely got it on the flavour. It is a delicious dessert. Obviously, I overcooked my chicken wings. It's a really horrible feeling to think that something as minor as that could be the difference between being in finals week or going home. So, yeah, I'm a bit gutted about that. Finally, it's Danilo. His dish is based on an Italian regional classic of roast lamb with fried bread and cheese balls. It's served with a broad bean mint pesto, green chicory with raisins, pickled onions, red pepper puree and the licorice sauce. I really like the presentation of your dish. I really like the way it looks. Thank you very much, Chef. Thank you. The lamb has been cooked really well. It's perfectly pink. It's how I would like it. And the licorice is very light in the background. The bread balls, really interesting. I really like the chicory with the raisins. I think a touch more cooking. There's just a bit of bitterness coming through at the end of it. It's a very interesting <coughs> plate of food. Definitely tasty. Thank you very much. Your pepper puree 
has a great flavour. The pickling of the onion is sharp and sort of smacks you around the mouth a little bit. And the bean pesto is fabulous. The garlic coming through is great. A little hint of mint in there as well. Yeah. Very, very good. Another interesting and intriguing dish. Very good. Thank you, Chef. Thank you very much. For dessert, Danilo is serving his take on tiramisu. A chocolate biscuit base, a chocolate and hazelnut ganache, mascarpone mousse, served with a coffee ice cream. We all, as chefs, think of a tiramisu. We, we know how it should look and how it should taste. And I'm intrigued as to the flavour of this and the texture, because the tiramisu texture is very important. Yeah, I can't wait to tuck in. I love the texture of the biscuit underneath and I love the crumb that you put on the plate. I think the ice cream is like velvet. It oozes coffee. You've taken a very simple, classic Italian dessert and brought it into the modern world. Well done. Thank you, Chef. It's a really well thought out plate. It's a, a confident move from you to take something that the whole world knows tiramisu and put your own stamp on it. I think you've done a great job, Danilo. Thanks. Definitely, I did my best. I definitely gave it my whole. I could have, I could have done better than this. There's no more. Thank you so much for a great semi-final round. You all came in here and you delivered some great tasting plates of food. We do have a tough job to do now. We can only take the strongest chefs through to the finals week. Go and take a break. We'll call you back when we've made our decision. Thank you. was a great semi-final round. Some great confident cooking from our three chefs today. They came back in this kitchen fighting and they delivered us some great food. I thought it was a fabulous round from Nick. Incredibly confident. I liked both of his dishes. I thought the John Dory was beautifully cooked. It was delicious. Now, his dessert, this is what I'm talking about. It delivered on all levels. The presentation on the plate was inventive. It was different. It was a fabulous dessert. Darren made us the halibut dish perfectly cooked, well seasoned. Everything on that plate was delicious. Very good dish, beautifully executed, but I feel like I've been cheated because the chicken wings weren't there, and that was such a shame. Darren's peanut praline parfait had all the makings of a great dessert. The flavours worked well. The parfait just wasn't set enough, it wasn't cold enough, and I think the contrast of the coldness and the soft chocolate mousse would have been sublime. Overall, I think Darren's cooked very well today, but there were little points of error. Danilo put together such a confident menu today. His lamb dish, which he served with that licorice sauce, worked so well and actually brought everything together. What an unusual, unexpected combination a very clever cookery. To take a tiramisu, flip it on its head, put his own take on it, and actually it worked so well. Really pleased for Danilo. He took a classic dessert and made it incredibly modern. It's really hard, but now we have to lose one of them. We had three professional chefs in the kitchen today, giving it their all. This is the cutting edge end of the competition, and we have no choice. I'm not counting my chickens, but um, to get to the final this week would be, it'd be mind blowing. It'd be amazing. It means everything. It would be such a great feeling. The experience of being here and the whole competition's been great. And to go home at this stage and miss it in the last week, I'd be devastated. Being a finalist would be great. Would be fantastic. It's something that is so close, but yet still so far. So I would be really, really happy.
guys, I'd like to thank you for a great semi-final round. We asked you to come in here and give it your best, and I believe you did just that. However, we will have to lose one of you today. Monica and I have made our decision. And the chef leaving the competition is... Darren. Good luck, boys. Well done. Good luck, with them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm disappointed, um, but you know, I, I've had such a great experience. It's been brilliant. I've had the time of my life. I've got to the semi-final as a master chef, you know, and, and I've cooked some great dishes. I've had some amazing feedback for the judges. So it's taught me to believe in myself a bit more and to have the confidence to go and do what I want to do. So yeah, I'm just really, really proud, and I hope that when my family see it, they'll be proud as well. Well done. Thank you, well chef. Well done. Chin chin. Congratulations. Cheers. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, chef. Well done. Ooh. Well done. Thank you very much. day in the kitchen. Thank you very much. You. To get to the finals is amazing. And, but the more the competition has gone on, the more you want it and the more you want to win it. So, yeah, I'm still in with a shot, and that's all I can ask for, really. And we're so happy to be in the finals week. It's brilliant. Yeah, I'm really happy for myself and really sorry for Darren. He's a great chef, a great guy. And now that I'm through, I can't realise it, actually. It would take me a few hours, I think. I love to celebrate now, but actually, I have to go back to work. Next time, it's the last of the semi-finals. The remaining three chefs will be heading to the northwest of England to cook for one of the country's most inspirational chefs. You're on, big boy. I'm just finding this dish quite difficult to naturally plate. So this is where it really hits. You need okay. to really knuckle down, yeah? They'll then have to use what they've learned to seal their place in finals week. I think you've absolutely nailed that. I love it.